In this video, we're going to look at the steps necessary to prepare to record in Pro Tools. First, we'll look at making selections for recording. You'll want to make sure that the Link Timeline and Edit Selection button is enabled in the Pro Tools toolbar. One of the easiest ways to make a selection for recording is to simply click on an existing clip in the session. Often you'll already have one or more clips in the session in the same location as the new clip that you're trying to record. By simply going to the Grabber tool, we can click on the existing clip, and as you can see, a selection with the appropriate length and timeline location is created automatically. And then I'm ready to begin recording new audio. It's also possible to make a selection during playback. In this case, I'll simply playback the session, then press the down arrow on the computer keyboard to mark the selection start, and then press the up arrow on the computer's keyboard to mark the selection end. Obviously, this isn't as precise as making a selection directly on the grid, but this can be a very useful technique when the grid is not available because you're working with a live recording or any recording that wasn't recorded with the click track. Once you've made an initial selection, you can make finer adjustments to the selection in and out points in the time base ruler. Notice that because my track is record enabled, the in and out markers are colored red. If no tracks are record enabled, the markers will be colored blue. Either way, you can modify the timeline selection points by clicking and dragging. If you want to maintain the selection length while clicking and dragging, simply hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows. Another way to manage selections during a recording session is to use memory locations. As we've discussed in previous videos, memory locations can store their time properties either as markers or as selections. Let's go ahead and open our memory location window by going to the Window menu and choosing Memory Locations, or by holding the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and pressing the number 5 on the numeric keypad. As you've already learned, there are several ways to create a new memory location. One is to click the plus sign at the beginning of the marker ruler, Another is to either control click on Mac or start click on Windows at any location in the marker's ruler. And the third way is to press enter on the computer's numeric keypad. If you want to create memory locations during playback, you have the option of having Pro Tools automatically name the memory location. This prevents the new memory location dialog from constantly popping up every time you create a new marker. To enable auto naming, Go to the pop-up menu in the Memory Locations window and enable Auto Name Memory Location. Now when I press Enter on the numeric keypad during playback, a new memory location will be created and automatically named. To create a selection-based memory location, first create an edit selection using any of the previously discussed techniques. Then create a new memory location. In the Memory Location dialog, under Time Properties, simply click the button next to Selection, give the memory location a meaningful name, and click OK. As you can see, a new selection-based memory location is created. Another way to make a selection for recording is to extend a selection between two memory locations. Recall the first memory location by selecting it in the Memory Locations window or clicking on the marker, then simply hold down the Shift key and recall the second memory location or click on its marker. Pro Tools will automatically make a selection between the two markers. Next, let's take a look at setting up Pre and Post Roll. Pre and Post Roll allow you to hear some additional material before and after the record pass. When Pre and Post Roll are enabled, you'll see yellow flags in the main time base ruler. When Pre and Post Roll are disabled, the flags will appear white. There are several ways to set the pre and post roll values in Pro Tools. The first is to go to the transport window and enter the desired pre or post roll value. Then you can press enter to lock in the value and enable pre roll or press the forward slash on the numeric keypad to automatically jump to the post roll value. 
Once the value is entered, you can enable and disable pre-roll and post-roll by clicking on their button in the transport window. You can also set the pre and post roll value by clicking in a playlist. With the selection already made on the track, simply option click on the Mac or alt click on Windows before the selection to set the pre roll value. Likewise, you can option click or alt click after the selection to set the post roll value. Then you can disable the pre or post roll by option clicking in the first half of the selection to disable the pre roll or in the second half of the selection to disable the post roll. You can also set the pre and post roll value in the time base ruler. Simply click and drag on the pre or post roll flag and move it to the desired location. To set the pre and post roll values to the same amount, click either of the flags and option drag on the Mac or alt drag on Windows. If you want to toggle both pre and post roll on or off, you can do this from the options menu. Simply go to options and select pre post roll or click command K on the Mac or control K on Windows. And that's a basic overview of preparing to record in Pro Tools.